and welcome to another edition of Blue Blood on the Main Line. I'm your host, Curtis Sumter, and I'm joined by no other than the head coach of the Villanova men's basketball team, Al Neptune. What's up, brother? What's going on? How you doing? What's up, Curtis? How you doing? Glad to be here, man. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Actually, you know, it sounds, sounds different saying that, but it actually sounds, sounds right saying head coach of the Villanova basketball team, Al Neptune. It's been a long time trying to get you up on here. It's been a long season, but I'm finally glad to uh, have you up here. Uh, again, glad to be here, man. Uh, happy to support you. I love I love your uh, platform and what you're doing. Appreciate you, man. So we're going to quickly dial into it. Um, this year was your first year as the, the head coach of the Villanova Wildcats, but your second year coaching overall. So before we talk about the Cats, I just kind of want to talk about just you know, because we haven't chatted about that, just your experience of just becoming a head coach, uh, period. You know, um, let's talk about, you know, how things went down uh, in your experience down at Fordham and building that program. I know it was pretty difficult and challenging, but it seems like you were faced with with all the challenges uh, that, that coaches have all at once and you was able to overcome. So how was that experience for you? I mean, I really love my time at Fordham. Um, it's a, a great institution, um, great people. Um, we were lucky enough to, um, you know, as a staff, recruit a lot of great guys. And um, we went into a season, had a, a pretty good turnaround um, for that program. And then uh, they, they've done a great job keeping it going. And uh, they're, they're killed. They killed it this year as well. So um really, really proud of those guys. But uh, I definitely love my time at Fordham. It was kind of like a, um, I wouldn't say unique situation, I guess with the landscape of college basketball changing a little bit, but in a sense it was unique because you had so many uh, transfer players you had to get, like you had to literally build the whole program and just, I guess, like what matter like a few weeks, like what, what was going on, man? And tell me, tell us a little bit about that, like a staff, uh, kids in a portal, kids probably transferring, like, you know, getting on board with alumni, uh, what was going on, bro? How was that experience? Yeah, I mean, you, you get the job um, and you, you pretty much uh, are in charge of everything, right? And um, it, it was a, a program at the time, um, you know, that definitely were some kids in the transfer portal. Um, I think we ended up keeping like four people, four or five people all together. Um, so we had to build a, a pretty much build a whole new roster. Um, but then also, um, you know, we had to, um, hire an entirely new staff um, and then at the same time uh, just getting to learn the university getting to learn the people um, and figuring things out for the first time so um, you put all, all, all those things together it, it was definitely uh, a challenging point for me personally um, but you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of funny because when you, I came back to Villanova it was the complete opposite um, I already knew all the people the staff was already set um, the team was already set. Um, so it, it was a complete opposite situation um, for what we, uh, we we endured at Fordham. I, was, uh, I wasn't able to, you know, catch a lot of your games, um, you know, playing when you were coaching at Fordham. But I was definitely following the, the box scores and just talking through the Villanova community and just checking in, you know, how's Kyle doing? And, you know, hearing and understanding uh, the dynamics, I speak to Henry, you know, often at different events. So just kind of understanding like what was kind of going on internally. And, uh, you know, my, my hat goes off to you, Kyle. You did an unbelievable job. I mean, for, for so much that was going on uh, there, like you said, trying to get a staff, players, four guys returning. That's a whole new team. And then getting everybody on the same page and 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 exceeding expectations doing well still finishing 500 i mean it just showed you know the 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 potential you know you you have as a as a coach man and i think you know I'm, you should be proud of yourself i'm sure everyone was definitely proud of you uh for that major accomplishment man so i just wanted to let you know that that was big time right there for sure appreciate that thank you it means a lot coming from you so uh now, moving forward, you, you've had a great year. Um, now, it's like, all right, I got my feet wet. Uh, I'm going into year two. You kind of got your system, your players, you're building, you're building. Boom, get the call. Hey, uh, Villanova wants to. Um, 
was that was that kind of hard? I mean, let's not get it. You know, I, I want to be honest. I mean, I know when you think Villanova, um, okay, you know, compared to Fordham at the time, the program, but I'm just thinking like just from a competitive standpoint of, of starting something and maybe trying to dig your heels in, uh, the people you got in, was that a hard move? Um, yeah, I think anytime there's some, a little bit of change, it's it's a decision. Um, and decision making is is hard, definitely hard at times. Um, I would say for me, um, I'm from New York City. Um, you know, I, I had some ties to Fordham just because I played up there. You, I mean, I think, I mean, you you played back up there in Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, some high school games like, up there. there. Yeah, sure. Um, and then <laughs> going up there all the time for the Catholic League finals. And um, so I was just feel really familiar with the place. I had a chance to live in my hometown for a year. So it was it was a great run while I was there. But, I mean, to be honest, when I got the call uh, about possibly coaching Villanova, I mean, Villanova for me has always been – a home uh, and a and a dream job. So um, while it was uh, a decision and it was a challenging decision um, for me personally, Villanova, it, it was a no brainer. That's what's up, man. I, uh, I'm i glad you, you know, they, they thought of you. I just remember just kind of hearing, watching the ticker go off the coach, right? Retiring. And I'm like, no, this is fake news. <laughs> and then, you um, know, it's gotta be fake news. But just over the years and talking to him, I sensed that, you know, his his time was was coming to an end. I just didn't know when. Um, and then after the, the run that they had, I was very, very shocked. Um, but, you know, I would say the biggest concern was like, oh, who's going to be the replacement? What are the, what are the what's the program going to do? Are we going to try to go after the the the, the, the name, so to speak? Um as someone who came from the program, grew up in the program, and understand how the program is built, my first thought was like, it got to be a Villanova guy. It can't be nobody else. It cannot be nobody else. Um, I said, at least, you know, if they want to try it out first or whatever it may be, I said, it has to be a Villanova guy. We have to sustain the things we got here. And, um, you know, I was like, I just didn't know which, which route they were going to go. And uh, and when I heard your, your name, you announced and all the rumblings before it actually happened, I was just like, damn, this is, it is, it's for real. Like, this is legit. And like, I can't be more excited um, that it was one of our guys. Like, I didn't care who it was. It's one of, one of our guys in it because uh, we're all in this together. We're all trying to, you know, keep the program uh, at a high level, man. And you did an unbelievable job this year. So I definitely, definitely want to give you that uh, credit as well. How was that, you know, this whole year? Um, taking the reins over for the program. Yeah, I get, um, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you start the year, Coach Wright retires. Um, you know, I, that's that's a major shock. I, I can't say it was a major shock to me when I heard that, that he was going to retire. So um, just understanding that as the new leader, that it was going to be a, uh, uh, just a tough, uh, a little bit of a tough time for Villanova, right? Um, just mm -hmm. because um, Coach Wright is someone that we all love, um, and had been accustomed to him being around. And I, I knew it would be a challenge just for the Villanova community with him moving on. And I, and I knew that uh, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily me. Um, like I, I, I didn't want to take any of that personal because um, you know, I said this to a lot of people at the time, like I was the only one who was like truly very excited because um, everybody else was thinking, man, our mentor, our former coach, our current coach, our <laughs> ambassador to Villanova is moving on. Um, so I, like, I, I just understood the moment with that. Um, and that's with everyone. That's with the staff. That's with the staff lost a, a, a mentor and a boss and someone they've, they, they've come to um, just expect to be around the players mm -hmm. lost a coach, uh, the university lost an ambassador and like just, so I, that that moment, I think, was just a, a, a interesting moment for all parties involved. You're right, um, so you're that, right. That was, that was the first thing that we kind of had to uh, just attack and um, uh, just find a way to move forward from. Um, and then once we move forward from there, um, you know, getting into the season, you know, I think, you know, we, we had a lot of challenges, man. We we started the year um, in, in our blue white game with three. It was basically a three on three. Um, we had <laughs> Dan Will Cheffel. Um, we had managers out there. So, you know, we, we had a lot of guys in and out the lineup this year. Um, you know, and I, I truly believe that, you know, throughout the year, our staff, 
um, and our our players just stayed committed um, through from some real tough times, some ups and downs. Um, and you know, normally in those situations, teams go their op- their own separate ways, um, and they aren't able to stick together. And I think our team did a a, a great job of sticking together. And I hope um, that moving forward, that experience um, is going to pay dividends in uh, in turning this thing around. The amount of adjustments you and the staff had to make and the players had to make through the course of this season is is insane, man. Like yeah. that that learning curve, yeah. you know, you, it's, 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 I mean, at the time, at the moment, you're like, damn, but it's definitely going to pay us off, you know, in the long run because you faced so many different challenges and still were able to do well, you know, overall. Um, obviously, you know, we all expect – um, we all want to, you know, expect bigger things, but we understand the, the race that we're running um, to, to see, you know, where we came out throughout all of everything we've had. I think it, it shows, okay, we're, we're on the right, the right track. And um, yeah, through the course of the season, man, and I was just watching it and I had my, my battles with a couple of people and, and, you know, just, just fans and just the expectation. And I'm like, you guys got to, look deeper and, and not just the box score and things of that nature. You got to look at the team, the dynamic. I said, things are just different now. Um, we played against a game against DuPaul and they were like the oldest team in the country. And people were like, well, how did you guys do DuPaul? I'm like, dude, they're the oldest team in the country. The dudes and they're like 26 years old, I'm like 25. I'm like, trust me, you see DuPaul on the chest, but 25 years old, like that's a grown mess. A lot of basketball and, and weight training and things of that nature, it, it catches up, you know, when you're playing against, you know, some some 19-year-olds and 20-year-olds and and uh, things of that nature. So um, this year was just surreal, I think, in college basketball entirely. And my next question to you is, how does the whole NIL and things of that, like, change the, the landscape of recruiting? I mean, you, were, you are one of the best recruiters Villanova's ever had. Um, and I still think you are, but Jeez. like, how does that change now? Like, well, I would say just, uh, I would, I would explain it like this, Kurt. Um, imagine there, uh, like think about if, if New York city was just annexed from, uh, the, the mainland and no longer it just, it was now its own separate entity. That is the kind of the shift in what NIL is to college basketball and that's not positive or negative um that's just what it is like it's it's such a big difference um just to three or four years ago just in terms of um the thought process of coaches and where you're uh where you're putting your time and efforts in recruiting um i would argue uh it's not just nil it's the transfer portal as well um so you know between those two entities it's like two huge it's like New York was annexed and then California completely annexed. And now we're just three different. It's it's a huge thing. And think about it. They all happen at the same time. Uh, they both happen at the same time, I should say. So um, one by itself would be huge. Both are are, are just massive. Um, and again, not a positive or negative. Uh, it's just uh, just a new reality. Um, you know, I think that, you know, the players are getting used to um, getting used to it. And as are we and you know, I think we'll, you know, I think it's actually good for the game. Um, players get uh, just more, uh, more juice um, and they, they get their uh, opportunity to say what's good for them. Uh, I think it holds a lot of people accountable, um, you know, and, you know, we'll see where this thing goes in the next couple of years. I think it's still shifting and moving as we go. Um, but, you know, the, the one constant is change. Nothing ever stays the same forever. Um, and I'm, I'm just excited to see where our game goes. was definitely all for it without even knowing you know the 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 intricate the nuances the nuances behind it just because it's like okay players can actually get paid now for their likeness yeah, yeah all for it um yeah. and then in the beginning because again there's always going to be changes i, I wish you I, I know you probably wanted a time machine you put you to go back a <laughs> couple of years oh my god all, all of us man yeah. all of us just just anything, man. Just just being on the squad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's certain things that um and I think it would have saved a lot of people's careers, you know, um, too. 
a lot of people's careers were hurt because of this, you know, being was supposed to be necessary a while ago. But again, you know, it can't be like the wild, wild west. There got to be some some things in order, some structures in order. Um, but at the same time, just so it doesn't like lose control, so you don't have people outside people recruiting for you. You know, like I wasn't sure like how that worked. You know, I was thinking like, well, if so if this is like NIL, I was like, can like somebody just come out of nowhere and just say, hey, like, I'm going to just give you this money and you can just go play for this team and you, and it doesn't even matter like who, like LIU could have came and said, Kirk, I'm staying in Brooklyn, downtown. I was like, really? Like, that's crazy, you know? But at the same time, it shows you that um, we all thought we always had, we always had to go to the biggest school, you know? That's the, that was our way to the next level. But in my short time working in NBA, I found out that's not the case. You just got to be good. It don't matter where you are in this world. You put that work in, you're good. They will find you, you know? Um, so a, a situation where a kid is good and want to stay home and somebody home finds some, you know, some, some money to stay home where he doesn't have to worry about the pressures of making money. We can still focus on ball. I think that's good, you know, he or she. Uh, I think that's very, very good. Um, and again, it teaches people how to be more mature early, how to be a pro early. Um, and those are some of the things I noticed in Europe. I was on teams, professional teams, and guys are like 15, 16. Now, granted, they wasn't playing in the games, but they were living a lifestyle of a pro. Um, and I definitely saw the mature level, uh, the maturity level, and just a rise in their game and, and totally as a human. So I'm all for it. And uh, the biggest thing is it holds people accountable. I agree. You know, I agree. Like, yeah. It forces you. It forces you have re great relationships with your players, um, mm -hmm. and, and treat them fairly. And, and but like, just think about it. Like, if a if a coach wants to leave, uh, and do something different with their career, we're allowed to do it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if I was a player, I would want that same freedom. So, um, I, I think that people fear change. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it's it's just not going to be the same as it's been in the yeah. past. Um, and we'll all adjust and we'll, and we'll figure it out as it goes. Um, but I, I do think that having people have, having uh, our student athletes, having their options is, is a good thing. Um, and the number one reason I would definitely say um, is definitely the coaches. Like, again, I, I, that was my biggest thing just in the past, how the game was or the rules were. Um, and again, so many people's careers or different things might have been changed if they were able to. Uh, have a little more say so and control over their destiny. Um, so, so again, this is this is great for the game, and like you said, it, it allows uh, a better relationship between player coach, more communication, more transparency. Um, those things I think weren't great in in the old game. Uh, it was more dictatorship, uh, and I mean, just like I think it was the style, the culture. You know what I mean? It was more of that whole thing like that rough tough you know um demeanor but um it's awesome i'm so glad where it's going i can't wait for for next year i'm glad to hear justin's coming back i heard the hoopla and the riff and raff and i wasn't sure but at the same time i was like it's villanova i can't see him leaving um it's just a great family and a great opportunity and you know he know he'll be loved and taken care of here regardless so I'm glad he's coming back. We need that that senior leadership, man. And Eric Dixon and Mark Armstrong, those guys. Um, we, we're going to be good next year, man. I can't wait. I can't wait to see uh, how we continue to to progress, man. Um, what does the summer look like for, for for us? What do we got? Well, uh, we're still in the spring, so for us, our off season is about um, getting the players individually as good as they possibly can. Uh, get get them as far as they can get skill wise, strength and conditioning, get them as far as they can get. Because uh, our thought process is uh, invest individually in the in the spring and summer, um, try to improve each player um, to the best of our ability and to the best of their abilities. And then once the fall comes back and we start getting back together um, as a team, um, if each individual player uh, improves dramatically, that's the best way for our team to improve. So. Um, that's that's been our thought process, and I, I think our guys are uh, fully embraced that, and I expect great things from them this offseason. 
It definitely, uh, there's this proof in, in the pudding. Um, that's always been, you know, the mentality of the program. It's always paid off. Um, I just would remember just my time in Nova, guys would be home in the summer. I'm like, yo, how y'all home in the summertime? I'm like, we never home. We're never home. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm right up the street and I can't get home. But <laughs> you, you started seeing when I was allowed to go home and you playing in these little tournaments and you doing these little things and you going to these camps and your game is just starting to improve, improve, improve because you spend so much time. Uh, you what know, tournaments like were you playing in, Kurt? I don't know if that's uh, legal. What, what, what tournaments were you playing in back then, well, I Kurt? Played in, uh, I played in uh, Dykeman and I played in... um. What was the one in um, Baru? Was it Baru? Baru College or? Oh, were, these are college, like oh, so actual college. Yeah, yeah uh, when I was in college, yeah, when I was uh, doing, okay. I was allowed to. So there was sanctioned. I had, we had to go there there with all paperwork. I think okay. there was sanctioned. You had to do that whole paperwork and you all that. Playing I you would never play in like Tillery or any of those. Nah, uh, nah, I didn't no? do that. I didn't oh, okay. do that. I didn't I do you. that. Got you. Oh, only got you. Dykeman, because 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 A Ray we was talking Dykeman. And, Did you uh, guys play on the same team? No, nah, we didn't play on the same team. I played on a Brooklyn team, and okay. then I played on uh, another Brooklyn team in, in uh, what you call it, in Baruch College. That was when I was coming back off the second ACL, so I used that wow. tournament to kind of get, get myself right for the season. Okay. And uh, it, it didn't go too good. It didn't go too good, but it was good. I needed that. You know what I'm saying? I needed that that roughness, that toughness, that physicality uh, to get my feet wet, and I came back into the season. Uh, after not playing for over a year and a half, kind of feel a little bit better about myself. So it really serves its purpose, man. Definitely does, man. So what do you got going on personally, Kyle, coming up in the next couple of weeks? I know the season, I know mean, the final four just ended. I know that whole uh, deal and, and going down there. And uh, what did you think about UConn winning uh, the, the, the Big East? I know I had some some talks with some of my, my guys, Charlie V., you know, talking smack to him, congratulating him on on that on that dub. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're all part of the same conference. We compete against each other a couple of times a year, but uh, once the NCAA happens, or honestly, even before the season, uh, before the Big East season, and when we're in non-conference, you always root for the Big East team because uh, you know it's always going to just make us better uh, as a conference. Um, so having a team. Um, from our conference win it, uh, win the whole thing is is great. Um, you know, and think about it, like they they weren't even the first place team in our conference this year. Uh right. and you know, they 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 and they played unbelievable um in the first part of the season. Uh, and I think it just tells you how good our league is. Um, you know, every year we're getting almost half our league. Uh, that's the thing that people don't really realize about the Big East. It's only 11. T- there's only 11 teams. Um, and we're getting five, six teams in every year. Um, you know, other conferences have, you know, 14, 15, 16 teams. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many teams are getting, like, how many conferences, I should say, are getting over half of their teams um, in the dance every year. So I, I think you know, UConn winning really helps us. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great thing for our, our conference. Been saying uh, the Big East is, is it's it's on its way back. Well, I say it's on its way back. It's it's pretty much back. Um, you know, I think it fell off. I said fell off. Just the perception of the Big East fell off for a few years with a few teams leaving, just because of the history, things of that nature. But I definitely think um, when when we won it back in in what sixteen or we it started. Yes, like the Big East is is back. Um, because I mean the, the team, UConn coming back into the Big East, Marquette doing well, uh Providence doing well for the last couple of years, really bringing noise, uh Creighton, um, just bringing noise to the to nationally. Um, I think it's definitely safe to say. And then also like just with Fatino coming back to the, the New York City in the garden. I think just that raw and and, and that itself is just going to make just the atmosphere. Like, I'm already booking it right now. When y'all play St. John's at the garden, you know I am there. I was there last year, but I'm definitely there now. It's going to be rocking even more. Uh, it's going to be like the the old St. John's. Um, so this, this is great for, for the whole Big East college basketball. So... I was very, very excited, man, to, to still be a part of it. And to now that, you know, Villanova is still 
Well, Villanova is like, you know, one of those teams that you you talk about more now and then than when you talk about the Big East. So this is great. It's great. No, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. The Big East is, especially over the last couple of years, you look at what we what the Big East did uh, on a non-conference. Um, you know, I put I put, I I really believe the Big East is the best basketball conference uh, in the country. Sure. And, you know, there's there's no other conference like this that is all about basketball. Every team in our league, basketball is the most important thing. Um, and it's definitely, in, if not for the entire school, definitely in its athletic department. So, um, you know, I, I don't, there's no other conference like it. It's so unique. Um, the cities that we play in, the coaches that we have in this league, the players that we have in this league, you know, think about, um, you know, now, uh, obviously UConn won it this year, you know, Villanova wins and wins the whole thing in 2016. The whole thing in 2018 was in the final four last year to back that up. Now UConn comes back and wins it. Um, you know, definitely great for our, great for our league. The big East is like you said, um, a, as good as it's ever been. I feel now. That's what's up, man. Well, I won't hold you too much longer, Kyle. I appreciate you taking this time out to, to hop on the show and kind of just quickly give you Quick, you know, uh, quickly give an overview of the season and how it went. Um, <clears throat> again, we had a great year. Um, it was definitely a roller coaster, but I left the season um, saying, like, you know what? We overcame a lot and we, we handled things well. Um, and still, like, I love to see our guys never get rattled. Anything that's going on on the floor, uh, whether winning, losing, it's the same mentality, the same speed. Um, so it just shows that, you know, that the guys were, were still just bought in and, and and playing the game the way they were supposed to play. And I think uh, moving forward, we'll continue to um, withstand this new dimension of, of, of college basketball and where it's going and then continue to uh, have as much success as we're, you know, we've been accustomed to. That's just my personal belief. Because like you said, things are always going to change. And the object is when things change to, you know, adapt with it and, um, you know, learn and, and, and then grow with it as well. So I definitely think that uh, we will do the, just that for sure. 100%. 100%. Thanks, man. Well, I uh, appreciate you, brother. I'm going to let you go. And Thanks, um, I'll be seeing you soon. I'm actually going to see you next week at the bank. All right. See you then. Appreciate you. Thanks right, for having me. Oh. No doubt, man. Go Cats. Yes, sir. Go Cats.